funny because you'll film for like two hours and you'll only get like 10 minutes of yeah, it's, content. Yeah, it's funny. Like this is weird to me. It would be better. Funny how it works. Be more usable. <coughs> God, <laughs> sorry. All right, guys. Welcome back to this awesome series that we're doing. Um, if you have not watched our previous video, we did a previous video on plate selection um, for our body armor series. This video, we will be covering plate carrier selection and talk about the pros and cons of some of the carriers on the market. We're talking about budget and how budget affects uh, the features that you're getting in that plate carrier. And we may get into some uses. Um, you know, if, if you're watching this video, you've already decided to run a plate carrier, most likely. So I don't want to really, again, beat a dead horse, talk chest rig versus plate carrier. We may do that in a later video or whatever. Um, for this video, all purposes of this video, you've chosen to run a plate carrier. You've watched your previous video. You decided what plate you want to carry. You've measured yourself properly, and now you need something to put your plate inside of. So um, without further ado, we have several options here, um, and they some are on the higher end of a budget, and some are on the lower end of your budget. Um, and again, if, if you're just one of those guys that's got a bunch of money lying around and you want to not even a bunch of money i won't say that like you're you're willing to and you have the resources to make that investment in like the highest end stuff that you can get there's things on the market for that specifically i would say top tier would you say cry precision is up there i mean they're um, up there for they're sure. up there pharaoh concepts is up there yeah haley strategic is up there yeah spirit of systems is up there all these guys just really have dialed in. And I think it's due to actually being made and designed by people that are working yeah, it's in just, fields where they have to work carriers. It's just the end user experience uh, and feedback so that those companies can innovate. And the majority of those companies are owned by uh, veterans. Mm -hmm. And so the professional end users from the special operations community, um, again, those guys have just a, a world of experience yeah. and knowledge. And then they're taking that and bringing that over here yep. um, to the civilian market, uh, not necessarily specifically for the civilian market, but you know, you're know, you able to go out as an average citizen and buy the stuff yeah. that these professional end users are using downrange. Yeah, and so. and two, it's it's one of those things where it, like these guys, and um, you know, technology has changed in the last five years. I think I was watching some videos the other day on plate care setups that were five years old from, yeah. you know, just a gun tubers that have been doing stuff. And those five-year-old videos were outdated. Like, yeah. and they, even in the videos, they were like, hey, this is kind of outdated. But a lot of these guys from these companies wore plate cares in a professional capacity. They were just like GI issued plate cares and they wore them and they had to do and work and perform in them. And they're like, hey, this sucks. You know, we're going to make a plate care that's like, has this feature or this feature and they've they've augmented and and changed these things to actually be more comfortable to be more lightweight to have more adaptable features um and we as civilians get to not have to go through those growing pains of just wearing like bad stuff we kind of get to like yeah i'm so for jump me, right in for me like i remember the um the iba that i was issued in the army in 2007 um looking at that in 2007 versus looking at where we are in 2022 mm -hmm. um it's light years into the future yeah. um the plate carriers look totally different feel totally different um i mean the advancements that we've made mm -hmm. in, in the innovations um you're getting a whole lot more with a whole lot less yeah that's probably the best way I can summarize that. Yeah, and, and people have figured out like, hey, like weight distribution matters. Like where you put things in certain places matters. Uh, materials matter, yeah. uh, cushioning or non-cushioning or being slick or being able to be a load bearing carrier. Like all this stuff matters and there almost isn't. Um, I would say one of my biggest frustrations when I was looking for my carrier, and I said this in the plate video that you hopefully you guys go back and watch um, if you're just seeing this video first, um, and I, I said this before, uh, I'm not married to any brand or company right now because I'm learning and I, there, everybody has a plate care. Like when I'm scrolling through Facebook, I see a bunch of companies I've never even heard of like, Oh, plate cares, plate cares, plate cares. Like yeah. there's so many plate cares in the market. And I just, 
it's hard to operate on in a prof, not a professional but on on a regular basis in one single plate carrier enough to be like okay let me try the next one okay let me try the next one and guys that have been doing this for 10 or 15 years have i just simply haven't had enough time inside of a carrier to really say like hey this is my preference and this is why and i've put on carriers and been like okay that's more comfortable or that's less comfortable um and kind of price things out in my budget and um some of the carriers we have here aren't i'm not even necessarily saying like hey buy this one but i wanted to point out some features of these and that way when you do find other carriers uh, a lot of carriers on the market will have similar features so it's not like hey buy like this plate carrier it's like hey i remember seeing that that feature kind of mattered and then you can kind of base your decision based off your budget and what your needs are yeah um so for for me personally um it's, it's kind of weird it, when you start getting into plate carriers it's like it's those guys that have kind of taken the next step in their gear and um the first thing you want to do when you buy any type of gear, if you're a gun guy, you're you're probably just a gearhead. And whenever you buy a gun, whenever you buy plate care, whenever you buy a helmet, the first thing you want to do is just deck it out with every single thing that you can deck it out. You're like, man, I, like, I get it with rifles all the time, especially like in a building capacity, you know. Yeah. And when we, you know, we're actually opening a retail store, we'll be able to customize rifles and, and things like that. Um one thing I know is people are like, man, I want like the drum mag, the um, vertical foregrip that flips down into like a bipod and like this huge long scope with lasers on both sides and like flashlights on everything. And just like, dude, yeah, like, what are you doing? You know, and it's, it's hard to like tell people to, especially when we're reviewing gear and talking about gear to like, hey, don't buy gear. I think a lot of, <laughs> a lot of guys get sucked into um, buying a look or yeah. trying to achieve a look. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, in the in the two uh, A or the firearms community or training community, we just call that cloning. Um, and okay, cool. Uh, I think a lot of that actually started in the airsoft community. Not to pick on the airsoft community, there's actually a decent amount of viable training that comes out of there, and there's a lot mm -hmm. of guys with uh, with some serious skill that come out of there, and hopefully they move over into a military or law enforcement capacity in the future um, as as they continue to grow. But mm -hmm. um, I think cloning started as a way to emulate, um, you know, these uh, higher tier units and um, these guys and girls were getting together, you know, hey, I want to um, set my kid up like I see the the dev crew guys do it or the CAD mm -hmm. guys do it or Rangers or Green Berets or whatever the case. Um, and they're, you know, accessorizing uh, based on what they see, not necessarily based on their mission. And so for me, when I start looking at plate carrier selection and plate selection um, or even accessories for firearms, um, really for me, where I start is my mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, just because I'm no longer in the military, uh, I'm not law enforcement, I'm just an average Joe like you, um, I still have a mission. Mm -hmm. And so my mission is where I start. My mission is where you guys should start or yep. where I'd recommend you start. And so some of these missions, let's talk about. Um, home defense is a mission. Uh, am I setting up a plate carrier in case I hear a, a bump in the night and I want to uh, quickly be able to toss that on, grab, you know, whatever firearm I'm going to use to defend myself and then handle that situation however I deem appropriate. Um, my mission could be like 2020, we saw uh, a lot of civil unrest uh, based on uh, the COVID and, and the way the media was portraying it. Um, so a huge increase in firearm sales, but mm -hmm. also a huge increase in uh, body armor sales. Yep. Um, and so, a huge increase in crime. Yeah. And we saw that through um, through the TV and through mm -hmm. YouTube. Uh, we were able to watch it. So it wasn't just something that people were saying. It's something yep. that we were witnessing. Perfect uh, opportunity to tease the, um, uh, what do we call in the plate carrier class? I have no play, idea. Play carrier dynamics? Whatever whatever you want to call it. <laughs> well, that may change, but the plate carrier, we'll call it for, for intents and purposes of this video, we'll call it the plate carrier dynamics class. Um, it's better than I was going to call it practical tactical gear theory. And that's just, that yeah, just it sounds like, <clears throat> yeah, and that's why we're not calling it that. So plate carrier dynamics, is that okay? That's fine. All right. 
played Takara Dynamic class with Exoteric Group, um, really giving people a chance to get out and, and vet your gear. And um, I've said it in a previous video, I'll say it again. He, this guy will put you in some uncomfortable situations. You will quickly find out what works and what does not work. Um, and the options today we're gonna show you, I think are viable options. Um, and again, it's really tough to say, hey, get this when everybody's mission set is, is different. You know, all the plate care videos on YouTube, everybody's like, says the same thing, like, hey, what's your mission set? And that kind of, it bugged me that I couldn't find like what I needed in the, of those videos. Cause it was like, well, I don't know, you know, like, I, I don't know what I need, you know, and they were, and Garen Thumb would be like, well, this is, you know, I have this and I have all these comms and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, I know I don't need that, you know, and it, it, it kind of seemed like everybody was giving non-specific answers. And it's like kind of the more research and the more I try to figure out what I needed, I realized why all those videos are that way is because there's no, like you said, you can either clone or you can figure out what you need for yourself. Yeah. If you clone, most likely you're going to spend money that you didn't need to spend on gear that you don't need. Um, and if you just take a little bit of extra time to like really think about and, and troubleshoot what you're actually going to use this plate carrier for. And um, another gear disclaimer, um, some of the stuff was sent to us for free, not affiliated in any way, but they did. I had good conversations with them. Prime Armor is one of them. Um, Ott Gear, this was actually purchased by me, but they are sending um, some of these just for the videos when we start getting into plate carrier setup and um, uh, operations videos. So um, <clears throat> that's our relationship with them. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I run primarily Ferro Concepts. Um, I have a, a, a line of communication with them. Um, you know, it's nothing crazy beyond a couple of DMs through Instagram, but they're solid guys. I wanted to address some of the, what people might consider lower end plate carriers. Um, but in my opinion, aren't even in the category of what we're talking about. Not because they're so low quality. I just think they have a different purpose. Low end and high end are, ter are terms that I like to use pretty loosely yeah. because I don't like to say this is absolute garbage and this is absolute yeah. gold. Nothing in this world is definitive. Mm -hmm. So I don't like to speak in definitives. Yep. I like to say this works better for me because X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And this might work better for you because A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Make your own decisions. But at the end of the day, there are definitely still yep. things that I would stay away from. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Yeah. So. so in that, I see a lot of people. Um, and as I was kind of teasing this, people were like, say, hey, like, what do you think about 511 play carriers? Mm -hmm. um, not, and not just 511. There was a bunch of like companies that I know to be kind of like Chinese made knockoffs of certain companies, um, you know, AR 500 plate carriers, things like that. Um, so I actually have below here a 511 plate carrier. Um, this is something I purchased with my own money. Um, they were running a sale on it at the store. Um, I bought it. We are in a professional studio here. Uh, I do not want to leave super expensive plate carriers lying around. And a lot of times too, like some of the, like the plate, the videos that you see or like where we're just pulling plate carriers off or there's a, you'll see like a bunch of people walking down a hallway all where kit, like kitted out or something like that. This is probably on one of those guys in the back. It, it's not close enough to really see what's going on. There's no real setup, but it just kind of gives that aesthetic look. Yeah. Keeps me from keeping nice stuff around the studio. And, um, Again, it's like, it'll hold a plate. Is it the most functional thing? Would I even use this for an actual plate care setup? Not at all. And you you talked about this too. Like 511 actually manufactures weighted, not, not ballistic rated anything. They're literally just weights, plates to throw in here. And if you look at their advertisements, it's all CrossFit community. Mm -hmm. It's all exercise. So in that aspect, like... This would be great if you're just planning on going and sweating in it, like literally doing a bunch of pull-ups with like a weighted vest in here. Like that's what these things are made for. So 511 isn't a, isn't a brand of plate carrier that I gravitate towards, but at the same time, it's not a brand of plate carrier that I'm not going to advocate for in certain situations. That situation being uh, 511 now has uh, retail stores across the country. I know we have two of them within our area and they sell these on the shelf. So if I needed to 
just purchase a plate carrier for home defense or for the surviving and active shooter and I don't need it for any other capacity and I'm not super into training with firearms. Um, it's just, again, it's a tool in the toolbox I'd rather have and not need than need mm -hmm. and not have. Cool, go buy it. It's an inexpensive option and then go buy some plates that also fit the budget and then yeah. you have your carrier. I'm still gonna tell you or encourage you that you should go out and you should train in it, exercise in it, yeah. not from the CrossFit capacity, but understand what it feels like to move in it and yeah. figure out uh, what you can do to adjust it to make it more or less comfortable. Yeah. Um, beyond yeah. that, it's, it's not a carrier that I would use in a professional capacity. I, I think it has some limitations and it has some drawbacks. To the average Joe, the concerned citizen, they see this in the store or online as an option and they say, hey, it looks comfortable because it's got this padding here. Uh, it's got some nice padding front and back uh, internally on the plate bags. Yeah. It has all this really cool laser cut molly attachment. Uh, it has these comfortable, uh, stretchy, adjustable, uh, adjustable cummerbunds. Which don't come off. Um, so it looks, it looks fairly modular. Uh, it looks kind of like everything else, but at the end of the day, little differences are going to make a big difference. Yeah. Um, and the sheer amount of fabric, like all of this fabric all over the sides, um, cause I actually put like mag for, for a minute. I put, um, mags on it. You know, I kind of loaded it out just to see what it would feel like. And it was like, I was getting a lot more comfort out of other things Yeah. with a lot, just less fabric. Like whenever you're sweating and you just have that much, just, and I'm not like a, a big guy, you know, um, it was like fabric was covering almost every inch of, of my body. And yeah. it's like the, uh, the IBA that I was issued uh, back in 2007, I'll just reference that because, uh, it's what we had at the time. I thought it was the coolest thing on the planet because I was getting body armor issued to me for the first time. Yeah. And you know, again, comparing it to what we have today in 2020 with all the innovation through experience that we've uh, got going on, uh, that stuff is just outdated. And this, even though it's sold today and manufactured today, kind of reminds me of that outdated technology of those original uh, yeah. IBAs. So I'd say for me, my money's not going to go to a 511 plate carrier. Yeah. Yes, it has a place in the world. That place is if you just want to run into the store, purchase a plate carrier, you're not super uh, concerned or, or invested in training with firearms um and you just want something for a defensive situation to throw on yeah. um this is an option and or again exercise. yeah or exercise and yeah. again this is an option uh buy the plate carrier buy the plates call it a day throw it in your closet throw it in your vehicle and uh and you're done yeah so so that's that um so now i kind of want to move to you know you and um you can grab your plate carrier there if you want. yeah so now we've got um you know, Sean has already said he, he runs Pharaoh Concepts. He loves Pharaoh Concepts. This is kind of like, this is like going to be on the higher end of, of what's on the market. Um, it's it's going to be comparable to something like, um, I hate to say comparable to something like Cry. Like Pharaoh, Pharaoh is something that people compare lesser, less expensive things to to um price wise and i, I don't yeah, know, really I, know what I, i'm trying to say i hate, you know the, I hate the terminology comparable yeah yeah um, that's, like i'm it, trying to get around it <laughs> yeah it's okay um really what we're doing is we started i think on the on the bottom end of what we would recommend or use personally and now we're moving to the high end of mm -hmm. what we would recommend or use personally yeah um this is my personal setup again uh the relationship with cry <laughs> Uh, or sorry, with Pharaoh, Jesus. Um, <laughs> again, the relationship with Pharaoh is I support them. They're good guys. They make good stuff. I spent my money on this at full retail, never asked for a discount. And I will continue to do so because the stuff that they make is is, is awesome. Yeah. Um, for the video, you might see that the side plate bags are empty and the rear plate bag is empty. There's a reason for that. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about it later. But uh, if we compare this to the 511 that we just looked at, the plate bags themselves, no padding on the back, no unnecessary or extra material. They're very thin, low profile. Those shoulder straps, again, very thin, very low profile. Um, for me, and I said this in the last video, as it pertains to plates, ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain. So the more material that I have, um, the more 
uh, weight that I have, mm -hmm. the the more suck I'm gonna have. And and I would like to point this out too. Uh, material absorbs water, mm -hmm. and water weighs a lot. Yeah. If you are an excessive sweater to where you are drenching everything that you wear, and you have a lot more material soaking up a lot more sweat, or if it's raining outside or yeah. something like that, or you're you're doing something where you're in or near water, that all that extra material is going to soak up water and weigh exponentially more. So that is another thing. To no, it's definitely a consideration. Uh, another big consideration with the the plate bags, the front and back bags uh, that come with this carrier. Um, is not only are they thin profile from the side, but they're also no excess material all the way around them. They're actually cut in the shape of a shooter cut plate. Mm. Um, so it enhances mobility in terms of my ability to move uh, arm, shoulders, just move a little bit more freely, more comfortably. Um, so this gives me the ability to enhance some of that mobility. Yeah. Um, so I'm really a big fan of that. Some drawbacks on higher end carriers is when you buy a carrier like this, uh, it's already starting at a higher price point. Mm -hmm. You're only getting the front plate bag and the rear plate bag and some shoulder straps. The shoulder straps don't come with this uh, padded sock that I have on here. Uh, they don't come with a cummerbund. Um, there's a reason for that. And some might see it as a drawback. A, I'm spending more money and I'm getting less, but I'm looking at it as though I have preferences through experience. So I don't want to spend money on something that's already kitted out that I'm going to start removing stuff from immediately and then replacing with other stuff. So you're going to buy the front plate bag. You're going to buy the rear plate bag. You're going to get the um, shoulder straps with it. Now you need to buy a cummerbund so that you can make it all work, attach it together. Um, I opt for a cummerbund with a little bit of structure to it because if uh, I decide to hang something off of this, I want it to maintain structure. I want it to maintain shape. And so uh, things that I put on my cummerbunds just internally, uh, I run side plates, so the side plate bags. Beyond that, they're pretty slick. We'll talk about that in the setup video. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a pretty simple plate carrier. Yeah, I like it, but just for comparison, uh, how much did the 511 cost? 511, well, that one was on like clearance for less than $100. But I think, I think they're about one... 10, $110 if you were just go buy that off the shelf. Okay, so $110 uh, for that 511 plate carrier in comparison to um, just the front and rear plate bag with the uh, shoulder straps and no cummerbund from Faro is in the ballpark of 270. And then the yeah. cummerbund, depending on which option you go for, uh, can be in the ballpark of 120. Mm -hmm. The way this carrier is kitted out and it's really minimalistic without plates is almost touching a thousand dollars and then add plates on top of that you're getting into a much more expensive setup yep. and again that's dictated by the mission mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and we would hope that you would your your primary amount of your budget is going to quality plates yeah again if, if it's if it's one or the other you know yeah. i'd rather have a plate <clears throat> that stops around than a really gucci looking plate carrier for sure yeah That's, and i mean this thing is it just looks awesome like, yeah but i like the modularity of a plate carrier oh, like yeah. this again i can expand it uh or i can uh, shrink it down and so we're talking about if I wanted to just pull this uh, mag pouch off this KTAR front flat that they sell and replace it with like their dope pouch, I can still get either three rifle mags or I can get a rifle mag, a radio, a tourniquet. However I want to set it up, I can set it up. But then I also have the ability to potentially run pistol magazines, yeah. run an admin pouch and, and kind of expand uh, that setup out as needed. Yeah. So again, your mission is going to dictate your setup. Mission's gonna, and, and two, when we're, when we're talking about budget, um, one thing to talk about that you, what you get when you pay a little bit more is extreme modularity. It's gonna, you'll be hard pressed to find a plate carrier on the market that's gonna be that modular at that price point. I mean, it, I mean, not at that price point, at, at a lower price point. Typically with some of the carriers on the market that are a little bit lower and it's like, you get what you get. Even down to like back panels and stuff. Like if they have zippered back panels, it's like you have to buy that company's back panels. Like, Well, at the beginning of the conversation, you talked about some people run a heavy carrier. Some people run a slick carrier, mm -hmm. uh, depending on if we really care about being overt versus covert. Mm -hmm. um, I run one carrier and that's it. And mm -hmm. the modularity of that carrier allows me to set it up yeah. from mission to mission. 
and I'm not spending more money than I need to. And that's, I'm, I'm speaking to the guys and girls that are really gear centric. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to spend more money than you need to, mm -hmm. because you think that today I might need a setup that accommodates this and tomorrow I might need a setup that accommodates this. Like, yeah. no, you can get a really good quality modular carrier and then you can just continue, uh, continually adjust it, mm -hmm. uh, make those modifications to it mm -hmm. and you're not spending a ton of money. So the prime carrier, uh, you know, it, it looks like a like a like a modular carrier, like most of the modular carriers that you're going to see on the market today. Some things that I like about it, some things that I I don't, or some things that I see as drawbacks. Yeah. So I love the fact that it has a quick disconnect yes. on the uh, on the shoulders, and it also has a quick disconnect for the cummerbund. So. If I'm in a situation that I need to get the carrier off quickly, maybe I'm injured and a teammate needs to remove this carrier from me uh, rather than having to cut it off yep. or undo Velcro and a bunch of panels. All they need to do is just quickly access one of these tabs, uh, either on the shoulder or down here on the side. And that cummerbund can come off and that shoulder strap can come off. That plate carrier can mm -hmm. come off very quickly. Another positive is putting it on. I would set it up and I would run it with one cummerbund attached, both of my shoulder straps attached and one off. I can just yep. slide my way into it and then quickly lock one cummerbund. It's yep. already set up for me and I'm good to go. That's a huge positive. Yeah. And um, in Prime, thank you so much for sending this stuff. We have to talk about negatives of it too. And I'm sure we'll get into this in operations and setup. Yeah. Um, but that just... I mean, you can kind of talk about it. We've already talked about this before. Just yeah, where so, these clips are located. Yeah, a quick drawback for me is where the clips are located, kind of how wide these shoulder straps are coming out. This is starting to get into where I'm going to mount my carbine. Mm -hmm. um, so it's creating a barrier or a buffer that prevents me from getting a really good um, mount, like a really good lockup mm -hmm. between that buttstock or that pistol brace and my my pec and or my shoulder. Yeah. Um, so that to me is a consideration. I don't necessarily love that. Yeah. Uh, my Pharaoh does have something very similar to this, but it's much lower profile and it's cut a little bit differently. And then this carrier is also pretty wide. It's got a lot of material to it. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of that foam padding on the inside as well mm -hmm. for comfort. Again, a quality plate bag doesn't necessarily have that, but what it does have instead is as you're buying those quality plates that we talked about, they're thinner, they're lower yeah. profile. You can get that pad that you can trim to the size of the plate yeah. and it'll sit in between the plate inside the bag and your, yeah. your body and it creates that level of comfort. And they do make those, um, you can actually buy Kevlar, like custom Kevlar ones too. Okay. You know, I mean, if you're buying a quality plate, hopefully <laughs> that... That wouldn't happen. But um, yeah, soft one thing I will point out, because you did mention the padding, is prime kind of, and now we're getting to, I mean, this is not on the higher end. It's definitely a more complete kit at the same price point as just the basic Pharaoh front and black, but black front and back. Um, and I actually have the price written down here. So we've got uh, the prime armor. We're talking $225 for kind of, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and when I talk about uh, the price is kind of going up, you're talking about modularity and padding, like these pads are completely removable. Um, so you don't have to run these padding and they make they make extra padding. So you can actually get an upgraded padding um, or a downgraded padding. So I do know a guy, um, shout out to my friend Tiberius uh, Gibbs on YouTube. He does, uh, he's a rep for Roscoe, Roscoe okay. Manufacturing. And they make solid barrels. Um, he works out in this thing like all the time. This is like his workout one. And he swears by that extra padding. Um, the, uh, not this padding that comes with the carrier, the extra padding they give you the option to buy. Um, and that's what he uses this thing for. He like, before he does any review, he just works out solid in it for like a week. Yeah. Um, so definitely, uh, um, a good option for a more complete setup in that you're not spending a thousand dollars. You're also not spending under two hundred dollars. You're kind of in that two twenty five range. Um, it is uh, construction. Anything really is going to be Cordura, um, unless you're buying like a Chinese plate carrier. Like probably not going to be Cordura. Um, and the cool thing about this is it's like the laminated Cordura, so you're going to get like a little water resistance in this. Yeah. You're not going to soak up a bunch of stuff. So another thing too is um, if you're the type of guy that wants to run 
the um, like a back panel, you can actually have your back panel zip on here. You know, and when we get to set up, we can talk about there's. Yeah, that's so going to be a whole that's, conversation. That's a, that's a rabbit hole. But the option is there if you are the type of person that runs a back panel. So let's talk about thing. a plate carrier that actually uh, surprised me or impressed yeah. me. Is this uh, Ott Gear? I, I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know it. if I'm pronouncing Ott it right. Gear, Audi, uh, if you, you know, I'm sure they're going to watch this video. They actually sent us some stuff. Um, but I, yeah, Ott Gear is what we'll call it for the, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. O-T-T-E Gear. So the, pop, the poppy seed, uh, yeah, camo Poppy's is, war is pretty cool. Um, yeah. We'll talk about uh, camo as it pertains to plate carrier selection here in just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just shouting this out. I think this is really cool. I know they're doing some stuff with Safari Land, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's definitely neat. Yeah, this plate carrier really stands out to me, and it looks very similar to a couple others that I'm just going to go ahead and shout out. Uh, this plate carrier looks really similar to the Pharaoh Slickster. It looks very mm -hmm. similar to the T Rex Arms AC. One yep. looks very similar to the um, Spirit of Systems LV119. Yeah. Um, and it looks similar. Don't think that I'm saying it's similar because they're stealing ideas. No, it's similar because obviously this design works. And so it doesn't necessarily matter who you're purchasing it from. You're getting, um, you're getting something of quality. And so I really like this plate carrier. The bags are nice and thin. They have a breathable uh, kind of uh, padding mesh on the inside. You can see through it. Like so, if, if I hold it up to the light, I can see light coming through it. Gotcha. You're, so you're getting all the. So it's definitely it's definitely a light uh, minimalistic carrier, but mm -hmm. it's also very modular. So I, I like that. Um, you have a little bit of padding here up on the shoulders. You've got mm -hmm. some routing for either hydration, a hydration bladder uh, like a Camelback, or for comms, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, up in the front. And this is how they sent this to you, but it comes with some uh, magazine pouches. Mm -hmm. I say magazine pouches, but these are multi-purpose pouches uh, for comms, for a tourniquet, um, for magazines. Mm -hmm. So again, the sky's the limit, use your imagination. And then the cummerbund, uh, it's nice that it has this. Uh, so just quick rip off. Yep. Um, and then the cummerbund itself actually has pockets with uh, just a, a little kind of catch-all on the bottom. I don't, I don't know what you want to call that. Yeah. But I could run a magazine in there and it wouldn't fall out. I could run a pre-packed uh, or pre-packaged IFAC in there. It wouldn't yeah. fall out. A uh, multitude of options for me for what I could carry in here. Mm -hmm. And then again, it's user configurable. All the Velcro is great. Uh, it's got some laser cut here so I could mm -hmm. run some swift clips and I could quickly uh, take on and off uh, a front placard. So I could put on a bigger placard that houses more if I need it. I could go a little bit more minimalistic like it is now and take that off. It's very easy to configure this very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so on a, uh, on a more budget friendly option, like this is a really, really quality carrier. Yeah. And again, this is really similar to Cry's JPC, uh, Spiritus is LV119, mm -hmm. Pharaoh's Slickster and T-Rex Arms AC1. Um, so yeah, I think uh, you're knocked it out of the park. Hopefully yep. we're pronouncing your name right. Yep. Um, I can't wait to get some time with some plates in this just yep. to see what it's about. Just to, just to, yeah, just to try it out. And that's, that's kind of the purpose of, that's how we have to vet all of our gear. But one thing I will mention too, is, um, when you buy the odd gear, you're paying about $160 is what this one runs. It actually comes with the three mag pouch placard. So that comes standard with it. So for $160, you're getting the carrier plus the three mag pouch placard and the cummerbund. Um, the other ones, they don't come with anything other than just the carrier in one of these cummerbunds. So, and they're about the same price. For what you pay for this, you're getting a lot for your money. Again, yep. it's a minimalistic carrier, just from the looks of it and from running similar carriers, this is this looks to be really comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, if it comes with those three mag pouch uh, up front, that's yep. awesome. Again, I can run a multitude of things in those pouches, but if I was looking to set up um, a plate carrier, and I have a firearm. I can run my magazines here. I can run either comms in here, medical in here. Uh, I can accessorize um, just by putting magazines or, or medical or whatever I need to in this cummerbund. And I'm not having to spend more money on more stuff to put on the carrier itself to get it to do what I need it to do. 
everything's already there. Mm -hmm. So this is a this is really close to kind of a one and done if I'm yeah. on a budget or if I'm considering my budget yeah. that I want to buy a carrier that's effective that meets uh, the the needs of my mission set uh, yeah. as a concerned citizen. This is a solid option. Yeah, and and the cummerbund's elastic and will just wrap in real tight. So something like this could easily be concealed under a hoodie, like what I'm wearing. Even I, what I do is I carry a zip up jacket in my car for for multiple reasons, you know, t changing a tire out in the rain or whatever. I've got like a weatherproof Columbia jacket. Um, but it's also in my head that if I throw something on over, I can throw that jacket over and nobody would know that I actually have this on. Um, plenty of Velcro for your cool patches too. So let's, well, so let's, let's talk about that real quick as, as far as plate carrier selection, because that's what this video is, not yeah. just demoing gear from, from other companies. But what do I need to really consider or focus on? what I'm selecting my plate carrier. So the first thing that we talked about was we want to be mission specific. And again, our missions are different based on what we're trying to accomplish and then the environment that we're working or living in. Um, so let's talk about some of those considerations. There's a difference between being overt and being covert. And I would imagine that everybody understands that, but if not, I'll go ahead and explain that. Being covert, um, you know, think about a spy wanting to minimize their profile or their signature. They don't want to be uh, outwardly like, hey, I'm James Bond mm -hmm. and draw attention to themselves. Uh, being covert, we're trying to blend in as best as possible with our surroundings. Being yeah. overt is, um, you know, wearing yellow rain boots and a pink raincoat and splashing around in puddles in the middle of a four-way intersection. Everybody knows that I'm there. Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily care. Um, so being overt versus covert, uh, when I set my uh, plate carriers up, I look at it from the standpoint of, uh, I love colors like this OD green or Ranger green. Yeah. I actually really like colors uh, like moss gray or uh, wolf gray. Yeah. I like black. Um, those are neutral colors. And a lot of people think of plate carriers and they think of tactical kit. They think of you know, camouflage patterns, uh, M81, multi-cam, multi-cam black, a multitude of others. Um, for me, I'm, a, I'm an average citizen now, just a, a normal civilian now. Um, and I want to blend in as best as I possibly can with my surroundings because I don't want to draw attention to myself. If I have to put a plate carrier on as a civilian, um, that stands out a lot more mm -hmm. than the guy walking down the street next to me without one. That already draws attention. So how can I blend my plate carrier in to match my surroundings? Yeah. Well, if I'm wearing a, a black hoodie, I'll throw a black plate carrier on. Uh, it's going to blend a lot more than me putting on a multi-cam plate carrier or a plate carrier with this, you know, awesome yeah. poppy seed um, uh, camo pattern. Yeah. Um, so kind of matching my plate carrier to what I'm wearing. Yeah. Uh, if I have that, you know, uh, Arcteric or Columbia weatherproof jacket mm -hmm. in my car, which I always do. Mm -hmm. um, and my plate carrier is going to roll around with me in my car. My plate carrier is going to be a matching color. Yeah. So I can run it either under or over just based on the environment that I'm working on. Yeah. Um, and I have the ability to remain as, as covert as possible, mm -hmm. uh, even while wearing that. And I like the minimalistic profile of carriers like this because yeah. I'm not wearing um, this blimp of a plate carrier that's mm -hmm. just loaded and packed out. And before we sat down, um, you know, I went on YouTube and I looked up plate carrier setups and I spent hours going down the rabbit hole of different setups and you'll see a ton of stuff. But the, the biggest thing that stood out to me, um, is that a lot of guys really want to carry like as much as they possibly can when I have the totally opposite mindset. Mm -hmm. I want to carry as, as, as little, as, little possible. as possible. It keeps me mobile. Um, it's not as taxing on mm -hmm. me. Um, and again, it's less overt and more yeah. covert. And so um, that plays into the, the mindset that I have when I'm, when I'm selecting a plate carrier. Yeah. So I like the minimalistic approach. Yeah. I really like... Um, a carrier that is a, it, it's adaptable yeah. to my needs. So I really like the modularity of the carriers. Mm -hmm. um, and again, selecting something that's not going to just yeah. scream, hey, I'm wearing body armor. Yeah. Most of the guys watching this are not watching this video be like, hey, I'm going to deploy in Afghanistan and, and what, what am I going to buy? Most of the people watching this, the 400% increase in uh, body armor and plate carrier purchases are because of 
a specific type of event, and that was civil unrest. Yeah, that was people being drugged out of their cars and beat or shot to death. Yeah, people defending their stores and getting shot by looters trying to loot their stores, or the opposite. Yeah, you know, um, we had random guys that were just gunned down in the street. We had people, the um, guy that uh, was di- running around disarming people. You saw that he was yeah, like a shooter rookie. Yeah, shout out shooter rookie. Yeah, good like, on you, man. Good on him. Like uh, we saw those types of things. If you're one of the people watching this video because that was the situation that you were preparing for, that's the situation that is most likely going to happen to me. That did happen to me. Um, what you are going to need, and I rarely make blanket statements like this, what you are going to need is something like this. Whether it be the AC1, whether it be the Ot Gear, whether it be the Slickster, what you probably are going to need is the most minimal uh, low profile carrier that you can get. You probably won't even have it loaded out with anything other than medical, like some medical um, and then high quality level, lightweight plates for mobility because your goal is to get out. Stop worrying about what looks cool and start worrying about what works. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, as odd as it sounds, you know, like buy less gear. <laughs> yeah. As much as it pains you, buy less gear, buy simple, quick, effective gear that works, that's within your budget, um, train in that gear, get trained in plate carriers, get trained in medical, learn how to do it. Yeah. But if you have any questions, comment below. If you, if you are a body armor expert and you work in one of these factories and you just nerd out because I know you guys are out there, comment below. Like, hey, take into consideration this. Um, this isn't the last video that we're going to be doing on this. There's just so much ground to cover. Um, we want to do more. We want to get more companies involved. We want to give you guys viable options and good information. Um, the next, we will be giving away some plates, which is going to be awesome. So you have a chance to win plates. You need a comment. We have five videos coming out. We need a comment from you on every one of those videos. After you comment on all five of those videos, you'll be entered to win some free body armor. So, um, hey, if you're one of those guys that's in the or girls that's in the market for plates and a plate carrier and that could put a decent chunk out of your budget yeah. you can win some solid actual viably a viable option of plates and then guess what you're you're sinking money into like one of the higher end carriers um so it it could be a, a giant step forward for you in your gear and your setup um so make sure you like comment on all of the videos at the end of the five videos we're gonna release a date for the class the plate carrier operations class. The next video we're doing will be plate carrier setup. We're going to teach you where to do, where to, how to install your plates. Uh, we'll probably go over sizing again. Um, you know what you should be carrying on your plate carrier. Um, if you're going for more minimalist setup, if if you're carrying a heavy load, um, how to do all that stuff. So it's going to be awesome. And thanks again for Sean from Exoteric Group for being here. Make sure you go follow Exoteric Group. Um, he also has his own media guy that we work with a lot, Chambered, uh, is it Chambered Media or Chambered Industries? Uh, Chambered Industries is Chambered. kind of the umbrella for, you know, Chambered Media okay. and all his other stuff. But he does a he does a fantastic job of making yeah. me look way cooler than I really am. <laughs> he's awesome. He's a good dude. And he'll be in some of the later videos. He's he's going to come out for the plate shoot and do that type of stuff with us. And probably the operations when we go to South River. Cool. Um, but yeah, so thanks for tuning in, guys. Make sure you go watch the previous video. Stay tuned for the next video, and we will see you guys later. Wrap.